What's up guys, welcome back to Tidal Gardens. Today, I'll be covering not only one of the most beginner friendly SPS corals, but also one of the most beginner friendly corals of any kind, and that is the Pavona, or also known as the Cactus Coral. Although Pavona are lumped in with the SPS corals generally, they tend to be far easier in the sense that they're less sensitive to fluctuations in water quality and are generally less demanding than others in this category. What I mean by that is water conditions that would cause more sensitive SPS such as Acropora or Montipora to discolor or even die back probably would not cause any noticeable change in a neighboring Pavona. So for the beginning hobbyist that's looking to dabble in the SPS world, the Pavona would be a good choice to test the waters, so to speak. Let's talk a bit about the different growth pattern possibilities. I've seen three main types of growth patterns from Pavona, a flat encrusting growth, a vertical plating growth, and finally a thick branching growth. In terms of coloration, I've only seen a handful. However, I'm sure as this hobby progresses, more colorful variants are sure to spring up. The ones we have here at Tidal Gardens include greens, purples, oranges, and even some uncommon ones, such as the Free Care variety that kind of has this magenta base and yellow tentacles. We even have one that's a blue color but honestly, it might not be a Pavona at all and might actually be a Leptoceras. One of my suppliers was over and we talked about it at length. He's in that Leptoceras camp and again, he may be right, but for now, we've got it on the site as a Pavona. What can make it hard to differentiate at times is the fact that the texture of the colonies can vary slightly, ranging from a more flat appearance to a furry one. It makes it sort of difficult to see what the polyps actually look like. Let's get into some care tips. For water flow, I like to give it medium to high flow, and this is for two main reasons. First, it both carries food to the colony better, and more on that in a little bit, and it keeps detritus from building on the colony. When detritus settles on the coral, it can die back and unfortunately, the different growth forms all can fall victim to these dead flow areas. The second reason is aesthetically, it looks nice to see the tentacles blow around. One of the major criticisms of SPS dominant aquariums is that lack of movement in the corals themselves. You kind of have to find movement when you can, so in the more, I guess, furry examples of Pavona, a good strong current can produce a nice aesthetic. For lighting, Pavona can be kept in medium to high light, but personally I would stay towards the medium end of the range as opposed to the high end. Essentially I shoot for about 100 par. I don't see a lot of benefits for going higher than that because the coloration of Pavona is actually remarkably consistent. It's not like an Acropora or Montipora that can look like a completely different coral under different light. Providing a lot more light than a Pavona needs usually leads to bleaching. Lastly, let's talk about feeding. To be honest, I don't go out of my way to feed these guys, but Pavona absolutely can be fed if you want. They have small mouths, but they're able to capture meaty foods that can fit, such as minced mysis shrimp or rotifers. If you feed your tank regularly, these corals are actually pretty good at grabbing food right out of the water column. Okay, that's a quick overview of Pavona corals. So who is this coral for? I'd say it's for the beginning hobbyist that's looking to dabble in the world of SPS, or actually for a veteran of the SPS world that's looking to add a coral with unique growth patterns to the lower part of their reef. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I will see you next time.